the example we looked at was based on the modification of the administrative distance of routes we learned from a neighbor. However, we could just modify the administrative distance of the routes locally on our routers using the distance command without adding any access control lists, without specifying any neighboring information either. In this case, you can see that for router OSPF process 10, we're stating that intra-area routes are going to have 100. Ooh, by default, it's 110, if you recall. The intra-area routes are going to be 100 as well. The default's 110. And external routes are going to have a value of 105. So this would be referring to all OSPF routes on this particular router. We look at the EIGRP example in this case. The EIGRP example is saying distance EIGRP 90, 100. Well, 90 is for the internally learned EIGRP routes, and 100 is for the externally learned EIGRP routes. So 90 being the default, but 100 being far removed from the default of 170. And then for BGP, we also have the example here, where router BGP 100, uh, we can set the external administrative distance, the internal BGP administrative distance, as well as the local BGP route administrative distance. So we have three different options there. Let's take a moment to look at a sample configuration of the distance command with OSPF. And the reason why is because there's a slightly, uh, there's a slight change in the command and how it operates compared to what we saw with EIGRP in our example. So we go to global configuration mode, we type in router OSPF1, we look at the distance command, it's asking us for an administrative distance. So let's just put 100 down. Now it's looking for a source. This is the same as we saw with EIGRP. It was looking for a source. Let's go back and take a look at that. Go back and take a look at it. We can see here that it was looking for a source. And with EIGRP, that source is your neighbor who is telling you about those routes. So in this case, you're providing the neighboring router's IP address and the wildcard map. Now remember, there's no directionality here. It's on a specific interface or anything like that. But here we are saying specifically it is this router at this IP address. When we receive anything from them, we're changing the administrative distance on that. But if we go back to OSPF, this IP source address is not the neighboring router's IP address. Why? Because with OSPF, we gobble up LSAs that are being flooded through the area. Those LSAs are generated by the source of routing information. So with that in mind, we need to provide a source address here that can be uh, related to something in those LSAs. And what would that be? It would be the router ID. The router ID is listed in the LSAs. So in this particular case, we can specify that anything we learn from our 6192.6.6.6 with a wildcard mask here of 0000. So anything we learn from our 6, give it an administrative distance of 100. And then we can go even further and provide that access control list that explicitly defines. the particular routes we want to affect. Notice, and this is true with EIGRP as well, that our options are limited. Standard access list. Standard access list. It can be named, or it can be in the regular range or the expanded range, but that's it. No prefix lists to match, it's not an option. No extended access control list, not an option. Strictly, standard access control list. But if we hit enter, it means all. It means all. The administrative distance being 100 now. Looking at the output of show IP route. 
We are learning about 172.16.32.0 slash 25 from R6. From R6. Notice what the administrative distance is now. 100. So, to recap, remember, for OSPF, the address and the mask are the router ID. For EIGRP, the address and the mask is the address of your neighbor. Specifically, the IP address, they are sending their routing information from.